Hi, I'm Caroline and I'm in the middle of a classic road trip around parts of the Scottish Highlands and Islands. So far I've made it to the top of the UK's highest mountain, Ben Nevis, been impressed by countless views that the Isle of Skye had to offer, from hikes amongst landslides and rock pinnacles, to exciting waterfalls and landscapes that resemble something out of a fairy tale. In today's episode, I'm trying something a little different. I take to the waters around the Summer Isles in a noisy rib boat and try and spot wildlife. So to save your ears, this episode will be coming to you in a slightly different format, but I hope you still enjoy it. morning today I am really excited about what we have got planned for the morning so far on a lot of the hikes that we've been doing particularly along coastal paths the instructions and guidance has said if you're lucky you might be able to spot and then they've reeled off a load of sea creatures and we've just not been lucky at all we've seen nothing so we've booked ourselves onto a boat trip just one hour around the summer isles but the guy yesterday was saying that they've seen lots of things like seals and dolphins and seabirds so we're keeping our fingers crossed that by actually hitting the water this morning we're gonna get lucky and we're gonna see something so we've come along to the seascape expeditions which is the company that we're doing our boat trip with and we are here at the moment in our port and we're going to be following the solid red line so we're going to go out to the Isle of Martin and then out to the seal colony here and um, back along Annat Bay. They were saying that apparently there's been quite a bit of dolphin spotting around here and around here they've got some like fishery farms. I'm assuming that it's probably salmon farming because Scottish salmon's like a really big thing and then we'll come back to Ullapore an hour later. So we've been given these really cool life vests and they aren't inflated at the moment which means that they, in comparison to most life jackets, pretty comfortable to wear and it just means that when we're looking around at wildlife we don't have these huge things like in the way and the guy has explained that it's like modern technology inside that as soon as the sensor that's inside of this hits the water there's some kind of like gas canister in it that will just self inflate it hopefully we're not actually going to need it today and that it's just a safety precaution but I'm quite impressed with these life jackets it's the first time I've ever seen them and it's just not really in the way quickly came across a solitary seal, one of two types that are found in the area. This was a grey seal rather than the common or harbour seal which can also be found around the Summer Isles. The main giveaway was its size. The male bulls can grow up to 1.8 metres long and weigh up to 250 kilos. across a small group of common seals, though they were in the water so only caught glimpses of their heads as they curiously were checking us out up on the rib boat. But it wasn't long before we came across a couple of common seals who were out sunbathing on the rocks. Still a little difficult to spot due to their excellent camouflage against the boulders. In comparison to the grey seals, which can weigh up to a quarter of a ton, these guys were much smaller and normally weigh around 120. 150 kilos. We then approached the Isle of Martin with its magnificent sea cliffs. A lot of the seabirds that would come to the cliffs in spring to have their chicks were gone by the time that we visited in August, though we did get a chance to spot a few. The first type looked like cormorants from a distance, but on closer inspection turned out to be a few shags. 
excellent swimmers and divers, we learned that they can use their wings as oars which help them to get to depths of up to 25 metres to chase after fish. We continued to keep our eyes peeled for more seabirds, whilst also spotting jellyfish that did the opposite of camouflaging in the water and marvelled at the beauty of the sea cliffs. A little further on, we got lucky and came across a colony of common seals. These were a lot easier to spot as they didn't have fur that matched the seaweed that they were perched on. Whilst on land they look rather cumbersome in their attempts to hop around, we were assured that in the water they were beautifully agile and able to last underwater for around 30 minutes without taking a breath. final stop was at a salmon farm. When young, there can be as many as 15,000 fish in a single pen, and as they get older and grow in both size and weight, they tend to get distributed among the pens. By harvest time, there'd only be about four to 5,000 fish in a pen. They hatch on the mainland, and then are brought to the pens for 18 to 24 months until they reach harvesting weight. Most of these salmon are sent around the UK, but some go over to continental Europe, and there have been more recently emerging markets in the US and Asia. It seemed as though most locals don't like the fish farms, as they feel that it's not natural to have so many salmon in such a small area. With no rushing tide, it means that the faeces sit at the bottom of the water, and there can be infestations of sea lice, which may go some way to explain why we kept on seeing fish jumping out of the water. This is often done to try and dislodge a sea louse. However, others in the community argue that it brings economic value to the area and importantly provides employment for many. I'm not too sure which one I prefer, the Kerrang or that boat trip. The two I think have so far been equal highlights of our trip up to Scotland so far. So as lovely as that boat trip was, we are actually pretty freezing. So we've just done a quick stop at the Frigate Cafe and Bistro, picked up a cu cup of coffee just to try and warm up. And we're gonna head up to a place called the Seafood Shack, I think it is. It's been highly recommended. It's been quite tasty around here. Having wandered around Ullapool for a little bit, I'm really liking this town. It's got quite an interesting history. Going back to even the Second World War, a lot of the fishermen who would fish off of the east coast of Scotland were finding that it had become too dangerous due to the enemy mines that had been placed out in the North Sea. So a lot of them came over to Ullapool and started fishing over here. And then if we fast forward a little bit to the sort of 60s, 70s, you've got what the locals call the Klondikers. So it was a lot of people from the ex-USSR who came over to do mackerel fishing and they had these huge boats that they just parked off of the coast to do the fishing and they canned them all up and then would send them back over to a lot of those Eastern European countries. When the USSR collapsed, so did the mackerel fishing industry and now you've got a lot more of the salmon farming and also uh, I think a lot of like the shellfish. The guy who took us out on the boat this morning was explaining that's got like a big price tag on it. So it's worth quite a bit of money to the fishermen. So that's what they go after the shellfish these days. 
but it's a really quaint little town, some really cute shops, like pretty whitewashed buildings as well and like, the locals have been really helpful. I was after a charge cable for my Fitbit because I forgot to pack one and my friend who I'm with her shoes have broken so we we're looking to get like a new pair of shoes and I'd asked someone where could we get these things from and I was told try in the hardware shop. I was thinking really a hardware shop in, in London if I went into a hardware shop and asked for a pair of hiking shoes or trainers I think I'd probably get laughed out of there but it just seemed to have everything in there but I really really like it here it's a lovely town I think if I'm in the area I'd definitely come back again there's still so much more to come in this Scotland series I'll go in search of some of the classic Scottish white sand beaches take the ferry over to the Outer Hebrides where I'll find out about the island's past and inspired by the wildlife spotted today I'll go in search of more from the capital of Stornoway if you've not done so already be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can join me in my Scottish adventures